So um, any other relevant evidence to show um, that you've been here, but also to show how you've been affected? So many people will think, well, how can I evidence that I've suffered? Especially if you don't, you know, you're not a person who kind of keep your belongings, keep your belongings um, or hoards documents like myself. <laughs> um, but yes, um, there's there's many different ways that we can evidence things. So um, what what's really, really important, especially for people that arrived before the 1st of January 1973, is to evidence any document that shows your entry to the country. Um, anything that shows that you've uh, had a record of you being here in the UK since arriving here. So for example, your national insurance. Some people have had a national insurance number for a very long time. Some people given one quite shortly after they arrived in the UK. Um, um, any educational records. Um, um, any travel documents, even if you weren't given a British passport, some people travelled on temporary travel documents back in the day. Um, you may have copies of them. The post office still may have copies of them. Um, if any of you are like me and have the same email from many years ago, the same email address, check through there. You may have documents in there or any communications. Um, if you've ever received any type of legal support, um, they have evidence of you being here, even if it was for something quite unrelated to the Windrush scandal, evidence that you contacted them in 1992 for whatever reason is evidence that you've been here, of course, and they will probably be able to share with you what address you used back then if you can't remember, and just finding out that information and looking into it can help you remember and find other type of um, evidence and useful information for the application process. Um, have you ever been held in a deportation centre um, or under any type of immigration act? Um, you can retrieve um, evidence by directly uh, contacting the deportation um, provisions that um, where you were, where, where you were detained, um, and you can contact any courts where you were also detained or if it was by um, the police or whatever, look uh, contact them for the records. For your records in relation to the police, you can contact 101 or you can go online at, um, there's a Metropolitan Police website. I'm not quite sure of the exact address, but if you Google Metropolitan Police official website, you will see a link, just make sure it's the official link and you can um, make a request for information there or by calling 101 or by attending any of the local police stations, they will give you advice on how to obtain information. Um, health records, so GP records, hospital records, your NHS number. Have you given birth to children in the UK? If so, how old are your children? What year were they born? Because if you um, did come before 1973, you're likely to have children that are that age, or, you know, sorry, that were born around those times so that's evidence that you've been in the country since then or at those times um have you ever had any um um medical treatments um have you ever been sectioned under the mental health act that's all evidence that you've been here have you ever declared to the doctor or have you ever been diagnosed of having any emotional um, well-being issues, mental health issues, have you ever been diagnosed with PTSD um, or maternal deprivation, any psychological disorders, attachment issues? If so, this is likely to relate back to the fact that you've been separated from family in early childhood um, due to the Windrush scandal. Due to that, you're likely to have had fractured relationships in your life. Um, you know, and these things are very, very important to, to evidence. Even being diagnosed with or telling your doctor that you've got stress or anxiety and depression, those type of things are the type of things that can, you can put under impact of life and you can get evidence by contacting your GP and requesting evidence um, or contacting 111, the non-emergency healthcare line, um, NHS line. So that's 111 for healthcare. Um, non-emergency matters and to request 
uh, medical evidence. There's also a service called PALS, Patient Advisory Liaison Service, that can be accessed online. Um, the contact details can be accessed online um, for PALS, and you can access any medical records for that from them as well to do with you, yourself or to do with your family, even if they're deceased, so long as you're the next of kin or person that, that is named on the um, estate as, or, or on the will. Um, you can uh, request access to their medical records or records with police or social services, mental health institutions, educational institutions, the care system, social services. Um, banking dwp so benefits even some people think that they've got no records well have you had records that um have you had benefits claims for the last 10 years 20 years 30 years or more if so they'll have they'll have evidence of the addresses that you've lived at they will also have any type of evidence of um health issues if you've claimed health related benefits if you've claimed other type of benefits then that is evidence that you've been on a low income and of course you've suffered because the government in this country only award benefits to those who are sick or on low income and otherwise needy so again that's evidence that you've suffered um, because um, the losses it's not just about financial losses but it's losses on the quality of life and you know family experience and stuff growing up with your family there's many of us who have siblings that we may live next to and we, we have fractured relationships with and it's likely to be a result of um, um, the trauma that we've experienced from our um, from our childhoods um, and dysfunctional relationships that of course was caused by the government who promised our family members a better quality life, a life where you'll be given better houses, better jobs. And in fact, it was quite the total opposite. Um, as many people will remember, and as I can only read up about um, and, and learn about through our community is the hostile envir environment that um, our parents and grandparents entered when they arrived in the UK with the brutal racism um, of, of the British society. Um, not just the public, but the media, the institutions, and it actually still goes on today. And our young people getting suspended and excluded from primary school, um, having their dreadlocks or cane rolls cut off in school or being told that their hairstyles are inappropriate for education or employment. All of these are also the results of the hostile environment that we were in. And um, of course, the tensions between um, the Caribbeans and the black British people and the um, white British people in the white British society. Um, we will later on at the end of the, towards the end of the presentation, we'll go, we'll, we will look at intergenerational trauma and how today's society is also kind of, um, um, is birthed by um, the, the sufferations that we have experienced um, in the Windrush era. Um, so the categories of awards, so areas where you can, uh, what you can claim for, as I've mentioned, uh, is employment. Um, so if you've been turned away from employment or you've had ill experiences um, in employment and it relates to the Windrush scandal and um, type of like tensions in the workplace and things like that. Um, detention, deportation, removal and returns or even threats of deportation or even the letters that everyone would have received around 2010, 2012 from the Home Office asking you to prove that you are British and being threatened that you need to prove it by a specific date before um, you are deported. And also, um, for those that were nationalised or neutralised and threatened to do this before a specific date, otherwise you risk being deported or removed from the UK. All of that comes under deportation and immigration. Um, housing, health, education, um, impact on normal daily life, so how it affected you emotionally back then and still today, including relationships, mental health, emotional well-being, a view of society, view of yourself. Um, immigration fees and associated legal costs um, and there's also a wider discretion to compensate 
for novel or unusual claims. So on all of the application, all the different types of applications, whether it's primary, close family member or representative of an estate, um, there is a there is a um, section on the form towards the end of the form of discretionary categories. Uh, discre sorry, a discretionary claim. This is where you can put anything that the normal. Sorry, that the questions that are already in the form haven't yet answered or have not yet covered. So this is for things that may be unusual or not yet discussed in the rest of the application. Um, and that will be on a very individual basis. But I can give you one experience, one example, just to kind of help you kind of um, understand the application. So this is the discretionary um, category on each of the forms would be, for example, those of us who may not have been born in a Commonwealth nation, but is a child of Commonwealth parents, parents that come from Commonwealth nations, and you have had your citizenship questioned and also threatened with deportation due to the current or the at the time that they were uh, approached by the Home Office, your parents' um, nationality and citizenship. So for example, some people who were born in the UK or other European countries to parents who had Caribbean nationality and citizenship status um, are, th are also threatened that they may be, they may be deported as well as their parents, although they were never born in the Caribbean or any other British Commonwealth nation. That's very unusual. It's not something that's commonly happened, but it's something that has happened to people and people that I know personally as well. So yeah, that's just a um, kind of example to help you understand the discretionary category. <laughs>